Hi, this is Ryan Thomas with East West here with another Composer Cloud tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at the comedy score demo that was written for one of the one minute Composer Cloud tips. And this is going to be a fun piece. Uh, as you can see, we've got quite a few tracks here. And uh, there's a lot of key switching and some fun uh, MIDI techniques that we're going to go through. And if you have any questions about the instruments that I'm using in this demo, there is a comprehensive patch list that has been provided for you in the video description. So all that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the piece. <laughs> Okay, let's stop there and break everything down, starting with the strings. We're going to add the pizzicato strings a little bit later, but for now, I actually want to talk about a technique that I'm going to be using quite often throughout this piece. As many of you know, if you've seen any of the previous tutorials, I really like the mod short patches for string shorts. And uh, they have four different articulations in the same patch. Uh, staccatissimo, staccato, staccato on bow, and marcato. And you cycle through those articulations using CC1 data. At the very lowest value, you'll have staccatissimo. And then at the very highest value, you'll trigger the marcato. And you can use this patch to simulate a slur to a staccato articulation. And it sounds like this. And we're going to be doing the same thing with woodwinds throughout the piece, but rather than using modulation data to trigger those uh, different articulations, uh, we're just going to be using key switches. So I just wanted to make you aware of that so that when you hear this articulation throughout the piece, you know what's going on. Okay, let's solo our strings bus and zoom in just a little bit. So you have this back and forth between the low strings and the high strings here. And one other thing I wanted to point out is that I am layering these marcato notes here with my sustains here. And that basically simulates an accent at the beginning of that note. So let's take a listen. And then here we're introducing tremolo violins and violas. Okay, let's add our pizzicato strings. And this will be fairly straightforward. Okay, not much to talk about there. Let's add brass. And there's not much going on in the brass section yet. Uh, we just have tuba that's going to be doubling the string basses. And I'm using a key switch patch in which I am alternating between a marcato and staccato articulation. And this note here is being played on a patch that is in the jazz trombone section of Hollywood Brass. Really cool little uh, section of the library there. 
Okay, moving on to the woodwinds. We pretty much just have a lot of doubling going on here with the exception of a duet between the clarinet and the English horn. So here we have the bass clarinet and the contrabassoon doubling the celli and the basses respectively with clarinets one and two doubling violin one and two. And here's our duet. And this here is just a pre-recorded flute gliss from Symphonic Orchestra. Really fun little patch. And let's go ahead and add harp and our percussion. So in this section we've got the celeste, the triangles, and the harp. There's our harp. triangle. And I should also point out that we're using the timpani here in the second beat of bar five to emphasize uh, those low voices hitting on this beat. All right, so I think that does it for uh, this first phrase. Let's go ahead and uh, move right along and we can just take it from right here. All right, let's go ahead and start with our pizzicato strings here. Not too complicated. Let's add our viola shorts here. Again, not too much to talk about there, fairly self-explanatory. So let's move on to the woodwinds. And for the most part, we're just going to be doubling those pizzicato strings, but we do have a oboe solo, so be listening out for that. Okay, and finally, let's move on to our harp and percussion. There's a little bit going on here, so let's go ahead and select our harp data, Glock, Celeste, and let's leave it at that for now. I'm using the glockenspiel here to bring out that oboe solo. And if you have a woodwind solo that is struggling to make itself heard through the rest of the orchestra, go ahead and double it with a glockenspiel and see if that fixes the problem. And let's go ahead and add the triangles and the wood block. the Mark Tree Gliss from Symphonic Orchestra. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, move on to our next phrase here. And we'll start right here. Okay, so we have some choir here. Let's start with that. And this is just the men's ooh patch from Hollywood Choirs. Fairly self-explanatory. Let's add our strings. Now we have this melody line in the uh, basses and the celli. 
and they are then joined by some tremolo, violas, and violins. And moving on to the woodwinds, we are just going to have the bassoon and the bass clarinet uh, doubling the celli. Hear that nice color that they add? And let's add the harp. And the harp is just going to be outlining the chord here. All right, and finally, we are going to add our percussion. And this section starts off with a cymbal scratch, a gong hit, the mark tree, and we are going to have the timpani adding a little bit of an emphasis on measure 12. And you've got those vibes there, just doubling the harp on that augmented chord arpeggio. Okay. So let's go ahead and check out this next phrase. And let's actually just go ahead and take it from right here. Okay, let's break this down, starting with the pizzicato strings. There's not a whole lot of content here. Pretty much just uh, introducing the section and then providing an accent here. Okay, now let's add our uh, other strings. And we have this uh, little melody line that we've introduced in the violin one with harmony in violin two. But I, I want to go ahead and stop it there. Uh, just to talk about the uh, change in articulation here, just for this note. You'll notice that there is a note uh, missing in the Violin 1 Legato track, and that note is going to be in the Violin Key Switch patch, and it is a trill. And what I've done here, and I like to do this when I'm switching back and forth between my legato strings and pretty much any other articulation, if the notes are connected, I like to add just a little bit of the next note in the legato patch so that you do get that slur. And again, that sounds like this. So you get that nice smooth transition. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and move on. From here, we just have string shorts, and you have this sort of call and response between the high strings and the low strings. And you can see where I'm triggering the marcato articulation and then the staccatissimo articulation. Okay, let's move on to the brass. We really don't have much content here, just this one note from that uh, jazz trombone patch. Okay. And moving on to the woodwinds. We mostly have doubling going on here in the woodwinds. So bass clarinet and contrabassoon are going to be doubling celli and basses, respectively. Flute and clarinet are going to be doubling the high strings. And it sounds like this. And then we have all of our high woodwinds coming in for these two chords. Let's listen to that one more time. Thank you. 
And again, these notes here and these notes here are just going to be our key switches for the bass clarinet and contrabassoon key switch patches. We're doing the same thing that we're doing in the strings, you know, switching back and forth between marcato and staccato articulation, but we're just using key switches to do that. Okay, and finally we just have a little bit of percussion. We have the triangles and a little slap effect from symphonic orchestra. Okay, so I think that does it for that section. Let's uh, go ahead and move into the next phrase. And we'll start two bars out for context. Let's actually stop there and just break down measure 18 because there is uh, quite a bit going on here. And we will start with the woodwinds because that's where most of the action is happening. So you have this little melody that's being traded off between the bassoon and the flute. And uh, it sounds like this. Okay. And those are both being accompanied by the strings here. The bassoon is being accompanied by the celli. And then you have the flute being accompanied by the violins and the violas. I need to actually start a little bit further back so that I can trigger the right key switch note in the bassoon. There we go. Okay. Now we have a little bit of percussion as well. There's providing some accents. So you have the wood block that is introducing this measure. And the triangles are going to be accompanying the little bassoon part, whereas the glock is going to be accompanying the flute. And of course, we have a cymbal swell going into this next section. Finally, let's go ahead and talk about the harp. The harp is just going to give us that uh, gliss into the next phrase. Okay, and speaking of the next phrase, let's go ahead and dive right into that. Starting at measure 18. Let's stop there. And we are going to start with the pizzicato strings first. So you have the violas just sort of holding down this one note with the celli uh, and the basses uh, providing accents on beats one and three of each measure. Let's add the rest of our strings. So you have violin one and two doing this ascending chord progression. All right, now let's add our brass. Now, we have this note from the solo French horn carrying over, actually, from the previous phrase. Uh, the flute has the last part of that little melody that was in bar 18, and the French horn then doubles it an octave below. So that's what you're hearing. So let's go ahead and listen to that. And then we have the whole French horn section coming in. Let's add our woodwinds. And once again, that flute note 
uh, from the previous bar uh, is going to be holding over. And we also have the English horn and the oboe doubling violin one and two in that ascending chord progression. And you also have some clarinet and flute runs. And these are just pre-recorded runs from Symphonic Orchestra, as well as Hollywood Orchestral Woodwinds. And uh, we've got the flute, piccolo, and clarinet. And as long as you get the timing right with these, they'll sound great. Uh, no need to program runs if you can just use the pre-recorded ones. Okay, let's add the harp. And the harp is pretty much just going to be vamping on uh, these notes here. Okay, and finally, we add our percussion. And there's not much to talk about here. You've just got the Mark Tree list that's going to be uh, accompanying those woodwind runs. All right, we are now into the last part of the piece. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's take a listen from bar 21. Yeah, fun little ending there. So let's break this down starting with strings. So we have this note from the uh, violins that is hanging over from the previous phrase. And that's going to be kind of taking up some space in these two measures here. And we have the cello and the basses coming in with this melody. Okay. Now let's add our brass. And here we have the full brass section coming in uh, just for these last two measures. And joining the basses, you're going to have the tuba and the trombones. And you also have a couple notes hanging over again from the previous phrase in the French horn section. And for these last two bars, of course, this is going to be trombone, this is going to be tuba, French horn uh, two, French horn one, trumpet two, trumpet one. Okay, now let's add the woodwinds. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So our woodwinds are going to be carrying this little descending melody for the first two bars here. And we will start off with the clarinet. Okay, once again, that's clarinet. And then we bring in the brass and the basses to uh, repeat that melody the last time. So one more time. And for those last two bars, we have the bass clarinet and the contrabassoon that are going to be doubling the basses and the celli. And finally, let's add the harp, just for this gliss here, and the rest of our percussion. Okay, and uh, that about does it for the piece. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the reverb setup. 
And we do have a little bit of choir in this piece, so let's start with that. We are using the Davies Choir Hall, the rear room. And you can see all the settings here. And for strings, we are just using the Southern California Hall string specific impulse. And I should note that I have my pizzicato strings and my other uh, articulations on two different buses, uh, just because I like to process pizzicato strings a little bit differently than everything else. Uh, there's just slightly more compression and a little bit more EQ. And as you can see, I, I also send just a little bit less to the reverbs as well. Okay. And for brass, I'm using the Southern California Hall Brass Specific Impulse. And then for woodwinds as well as percussion, I'm using the Northwest Hall Rear Room. And I should point out that for harp in this piece, I am sending both to the string reverb as well as the abandoned abbey. And then of course, Almost everything is also sent to what I call my stage verb, which is a beautiful lexicon emulation in Spaces 2. This is the classic digital with the 2.7 second tail. Okay, and uh, that does it for the piece. Uh, I hope you were able to get something uh, interesting and valuable out of this. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video.